Good evening, and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending March 14th, 2020. This week is still a little sparse on major anime news, but it does still bring some fun and interesting stories in these kind of odd times. Uh, first up, iTube, the official YouTube channel for the Aikatsu Idol franchise, announced last weekend that a new project will be launching this fall. It is set to air on TV Tokyo and its affiliate channels. Not much information on the project was announced, but more information will be released in June. It's a little ways to wait, so idol fans, keep an eye out. The Aikatsu franchise began with an arcade card game in October 2012. The first anime based on the game also premiered that same year and ran through 2016. Three more anime series followed, including the currently airing uh, Aikatsu on Parade, which began in October of last year. So you have a lot of catching up to do. The National Art Center in Tokyo, I love this poster, has announced an upcoming exhibition themed around manga, anime, games, and tokusatsu. Uh, tokusatsu, if you're not familiar, actually means special effects and usually refers to a specific genre of live-action film and television that uses special effects heavily, like Power Rangers uh, and Kamen Rider. The upcoming exhibition will be held in Tokyo from July 8th to September 22nd, and will then move to the Oita Prefectural Art Museum from November 21st to January 17th, 2021. It's a rerun of the Manga Tokyo exhibition that was held in Paris in 2018, titled Manga City Tokyo Japan's Manga Anime Games Tokusatsu 2020. <laughs> the exhibition will feature more than 500 pieces of art, production materials, and video from 93 different properties, so pretty expansive. The exhibit will be divided into three sections, a cycle of destruction and restoration, which will focus on properties like Akira, Evangelion, and Godzilla, which have apocalyptic themes, naturally. Then there's everyday life in Tokyo, which will focus on properties like Rurouni Kenshin, which depict life in Tokyo during different periods of time, good choice, and character versus Tokyo, which will reproduce real-life anime collaborations and installations like the Unicorn Gundam in Odaiba. Pretty darn cool. A lot of fun little Easter eggs in that poster, too. I love that poster. Uh, moving on, the new Japanese copyright bill that's been in development since last February is officially making headway in the government. On Tuesday, the Japanese cabinet meeting officially approved the bill, which extends copyright law to punish the download of illegally obtained manga, magazines, and academic works. Now, for context, the law used to only punish the downloading of pirated music and videos and the illegal uploading of all materials. The revision will still allow for things like posting a single panel from a multiple page manga or posting a photograph where manga is in it but it's not the main focus. And the download of derivative works like doujinshi and fanfiction will also not be punished. Now, the bill has not yet been sent to the Japanese parliament, which is another big section of that, or segment of that whole thing, but the government's aiming to implement the new revisions by January 1st, 2021, which gives you an idea of how long it takes for law to move through the system, but we'll keep you updated. The coronavirus uh, outbreak has continued to prompt uh, shutdowns and cancellations across Japan and the whole world. Now, as before, we can't cover every single closing, but we will touch on a couple interesting developments in the anime and manga world particularly, and this is a big one. Uh, first up, from real life baseball to anime baseball, Japan's National High School Baseball Invitational Tournament uh, is a massive deal. It's unbelievably popular, and unfortunately it's been canceled due to the COVID concerns. It was originally going to be broadcast on the NHK General Channel from March 19th through March 22nd. It is a nationwide event, but now the channel will be broadcasting the first 14 episodes of baseball anime Major 2nd in the tournament's time slots instead. So instead of tuning in to watch the actual baseball, you'll watch anime baseball. Uh, now, as we mentioned last week, uh, the Japanese government uh, has asked schools to close until mid-April and requested that children and everyone else stay home and avoid any large gatherings. 
Many properties and distributors have been pitching in to help alleviate the boredom this will surely cause. The latest this week being the One Piece franchise. Shueisha has released 60, that's six zero volumes of the One Piece manga for free online through April 5th. Now this is the original Japanese release. These volumes span more than a decade's worth of the series. They're available on both the Zebrak comic website and the Japanese Shonen Jump Plus application. Uh, now, Shonen Jump editor commented on the release, saying that they, quote, hope Luffy's adventures will be enjoyed by children who are having difficulties going outside, end quote. Fuji TV is also releasing daily recap specials of the One Piece anime titled Special Edition Episode Series. These recaps are airing every day on Fuji TV from March 9th to April 1st, except March 11th and 20th for some reason, and will be available on FOD and Tiver. After they air, new episodes of the One Piece anime also continue airing on Sundays as they have been. So, good on them for doing that. Here's hoping this crisis will be over soon, meanwhile, and everyone can safely return to their normal lives. And, hey, at least fewer real-world events gives us more time to catch up on our anime watch lists, like the Studio Ghibli catalog. Um, speaking of, remember that week where we were first told that the Studio Ghibli films would never be released on streaming services and then a few days later that they were all being released on Netflix? Well, Ghibli co-founder Toshio Suzuki recently explained a bit about how that development happened. Suzuki attended a talk event last Saturday to commemorate the release of the Ghibli Museum's first photo book, and yes, they do events like that. Uh, at that event, he was asked about why the company lifted its restriction on streaming and gave a bit of an explanation, and just you wait for this. Quote from Suzuki, The film that Hayao Miyazaki is working on is going to take a long time to complete, that being the case. It's also going to cost a lot of money. I told him that we'd be able to cover the production costs with a deal, to which he said, well then, it can't be helped. End quote. Suzuki went on to say that Miyazaki doesn't use computers or smartphones, so he doesn't use or really understand video streaming services. Uh, Suzuki commented, quote, When I told him about digital streaming, it didn't really click for him. I made use of that. End quote. Suzuki's final explanation on the topic was about why they chose Netflix to release the films, and he explained, quote, Regarding Netflix, we've started reaching a point where modern streaming services can create, fund, entirely new films. At the same time, Ghibli's making a film that is completely unlike anything we've done before. Really? We're making that at the same time we're opening up our films to streaming. To people who make films, theaters and DVDs are important, but I think that streaming is important as well. End quote. Hmm. Interesting. Well, more on that if we hear anything more. Uh, if you've ever wished you could bring home your own personal Doraemon, your chance is coming this summer. Takara Tomi has announced the new Doraemon with You, as in the letter U, interactive robot, which can chat, respond to specific words and phrases, and even teach basic coding. The personal Doraemon has a vocabulary of more than 1,500 words, and it changes his points of conversation depending on the time of day, such as after school time or bedtime. He also comes with specialized cards that specialized cards that uh, expand his functionality. Some cards will let you chat about characters from the latest season of the Doraemon anime. Of course, some will activate game modes and trivia, and some can even be used to program new behaviors. A deck of simple commands is designed to teach basic programming to kids. Command cards can be strung together that teach Doraemon to respond to motions with a variety of expressions, comments, and movements. Using the cards, more than 4,000 unique programs can be created, which is pretty, eh, pretty impressive. The robot is set to come out in June online and in toy stores across Japan and will cost 19,800 yen before tax. That's about 190 US dollars. Lastly, in honor of White Day, Fate Grand Order has teamed up with the My Navi News website to release a quiz that will tell you your ideal male partner from the Fate franchise. Simply answer a short 
five question quiz and be matched with your perfect fate boyfriend. If only it were that easy. The questions are things like, which would you prioritize, a date or a call from your boss? Wonder which way that's supposed to go. And it will help the quiz diagnose your personality as well as pick your date. There are 15 possible results, including favorites like Gilgamesh, Emiya, and the prototype character Arthur Pendragon. It seems surprising to me that there hasn't been a version made with the girls of fate yet. Maybe that's next. Who knows? That's all for this week. Thanks for watching.